Hey friends, so this feels like a lifetime ago, but I was a few years ago, I was pretty depressed. I was really feeling, wasn't even feeling anything, right? Like that's the thing about depression, it just gets, you're just numb. You've numbed yourself to the world and you feel kind of cold and vacant. And I remember writing a blog post on my Word Vomits blog, uh, titled, A Man Lives in a Box. And it was about myself, basically, like a very thin, hardly disguised, description of my daily life of how I live in a box and I get out of the, every morning I wake up and I get out of that box and I get into another box which is the elevator I go down and then I get into another box which is a bus and I get on the bus to a train station which is another box and goes to work it's another box sit in front of a computer with a screen typing in boxes and just this 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 sense of despair and you know, I, I, the, another phrase I've used is that life felt like a jail sentence with extra steps like you know my internal life felt like a prison and I was tired all the time and and um, you know I I have been thinking about that again when thinking about my life recent I guess during COVID I think COVID felt like wow the world is suddenly you know now we're all locked on lockdown and indoors and, and constrained in our options and and I would say that so to kind of jump back and jump forward again I would say that, you know, as I once wrote a, I don't know if I have a video about this, but I have a phrase which is like, does your life feel more like a playground or a prison? Right? And the, what is, what does a playground feel like? It's, it's novelty and surprise and being able to react to things and respond to things and move around and, you know, <laughs> um, whereas a prison is rigid. A prison is fixed. A prison is, you're stuck there and you got to go in a circle and every like every day you're in a loop whereas a playground you get to fuck around right you get to move and you get to see things and all of that and uh yeah you know uh, that just wasn't i understood it intellectually i think but uh i didn't appreciate it emotionally maybe or like in my so you know i've been talking to some friends who are very body aware and I wouldn't claim to be very body aware but like you know I think there's a thing to be said about like so there's your head there's your throat there's your chest there's your, then there's your stomach right and then there's all the way down to your anus <laughs> but um, the stomach I think for me is, is a place of uh, tension and, and nervousness and uncertainty and you know I know that I, I have like everything everything up here I'm very strong I have I have a good voice I have a good heart I am smart you know I, I perceptive I can stand tall but like around here in my gut that's where I feel like I have a lot of uh, anxiety and I don't know how true that is for everybody uh, I mean I think a lot of people struggle in similar ways because we all have been through similar we live in a society right but I think some people have strong guts you know and some people and I would like to meet such people and learn from them and, and feel their vibes and, and I think you can pick up some of these things by osmosis so I'm curious about that but anyways what else are talking about prisons playgrounds structure rigidity I wanted to get to talk, get around to talking about fatigue and routines and, and exhaustion you know uh, so my SF trip was very last minute like I didn't plan it out for months and months I was, I was basically given an invite like a month before-ish and I wasn't even sure I was going to go until like almost maybe a couple of weeks beforehand and uh, I was determined to quote unquote make the most of the trip and so I was gonna I, and what, what does that mean? to me that meant talking to as many people as possible and I didn't have the energy to schedule meetups with people like calendars for me is just it's just nightmare land for me calendars schedules uh, plans having kind of uh, reservations and, and, and all of those things to me that reminds me of school it reminds me of timetables it's very prison like for me and I know that that's not the case for everybody I know I have friends who um, the idea of having structure and having things knowing ahead of time what is possible what is not what like that gives them it opens up their world right so to them that's, that's more of a playground vibe feeling like oh I'm gonna go to the playground tomorrow or I'm gonna go next week it's something to look forward to something exciting and I, I really appreciate that and I feel like I would like to learn some of that and I think I'm internally conflicted about the degree to which I can become that you know to, to what degree is it like my destiny that 
to, to what degree is like your history and biology your destiny right so if something troubled me as a child to what degree will it trouble me always and some people do the opposite right some people like grow up as, as fat kids and then they decide they don't want to be fat kids anymore and so they, they learn nutrition and they learn exercise and they get good at it and then you know they lose all the fat and then they don't like once you know how to move the needle why stop in some arbitrary space so they go all the way they become really really fit and they become really and some of them you know find a very nourishing and and like humanizing way to do it some of them turn that into their new prison you know it's like they pre they're running away from from fatness because they feel that it's it's immoral it's like a you know their social judgment and then fat phobia and uh you, know, you lack confidence or whatever you just don't want to be the fat kid anymore Right, and so it's like then you go to go meta and ask yourself what's what's your model of what it means to be a fat kid, you know, and you can be tormented by your model of what it means to be a fat kid even if you're not fat, right? Like, and so it's like you're so obsessed with trying to be not that in negation, you're still you're still reinforcing that hierarchy, right? Same for being smart, you know. I think that a lot of smart people are so afraid of being stupid or being perceived as stupid that they stick to things that they know and they're they afraid of asking dumb questions they're afraid of being seen making mistakes and that becomes a kind of prison as well <sighs> that's not necessarily what I wanted to talk about but it's all related and I'm, I'm assembling this big thing right? I'm thinking about it eventually maybe this will be a book or something but I'm just, I'm just playing with my ideas but um, the thing that I want to talk about about my personal experience is t about tiredness and exhaustion and how you know so since coming back to Singapore from SF, uh, I have been sleeping fairly early. I've been tired at night, which is nice. And I've been waking up fairly early. I've been waking up like before 9 a.m. I've been waking up at like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 7 a.m. And uh, it's nice to have so much sunlight. I think it's, it's healthy, right? It's good for the body. Um, and yeah, maybe I can transition to being like a early morning person. That would be cool. Uh, but even then, that's still what I want to say. I want to say that I'm curious to know to what degree is my experience of tiredness and exhaustion not just like the immediate first level um, biological experience, but uh, and you know I'm not saying that the biological experience is not real. It is real, but I'm just wondering about how the way we think shapes not even the way we think you know that's not the right frame um, how our assumptions and expectations about what's going to happen you know so I mean, at some point when working on my book I was researching fear and like what is fear where does it come from you know why do we get anxious and stuff like that and some there are things like you know you, you see someone and they frighten you because of your assumptions about what someone like that is and the fear you experience is real you know you, you feel it in your body you have a panic response maybe because you see someone who looks like your dad let's say your dad used to abuse you or whatever and uh, same for you know um, I found that the decision to have a coffee itself has a, has an effect when the moment you decide oh, I'm gonna have a coffee even before you press the button or whatever and get the coffee like this there's, there's something of an effect there's a Pavlovian response right and I, I similarly have an experience with, with hunger I remember um, and I highly recommend everyone try it once at least uh, but make sure you do you know I'm not a doctor check your check whatever check things you need to check but uh, if you've ever done like a, a, a day of fasting meaning you don't eat the entire day just drink water and again don't do this if, if you can't but like if, if you were to figure it out and, and be responsible of how you do it. Um, I remember fasting because my colleague, he used to fast once a week and he was very healthy and, and, and very uh, you know, evangelic, even evangelical about it. Uh, he was saying that just, you know, he's passionate about like longevity and life, lifespan extension and he's saying that it's just good. And I just wanted to try it and see what it's like. And I remember um, being surprised at how um, how fine I was when I was when I had pre-committed to not eating uh, I didn't even feel hungry at lunch but uh, at dinner I felt very hungry and I skipped dinner as well and I was having intrusive thoughts about food like I was lying in bed and I was like ah noodles ah fish whatever I was just thinking about food and I was thinking to myself I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and I'm gonna be starving I'm gonna be so hungry because I've never gone this long without food before and next morning and I woke the next morning when I woke up 
I was not hungry. I was fine. I was I wasn't even like slightly hungry. I woke up satisfied or whatever. Like I I, I woke up not hungry, and that was just a, it. It blew my mind because I had always assumed that the, for some reason I assumed that the longer you go without eating, the hungrier and hungrier you're gonna get. That's not actually true. Hunger. There are spikes in hunger, and, and that what that reminded me of. It reminded me of cigarettes. It reminded me of cigarette cravings. Like a craving can really peak, but then it falls off. And knowing that cravings fall off is a very, very remarkable bit of knowledge. You know, and it's true with like sleepiness. I think I found that uh, when I used to sleep late all the time, there would come a point maybe at about eight p.m. or nine p.m. where I start to get lethargic and sleepy. But I know that if I just power through it. Do I keep spitting? I don't know why it's happening. If I just power through it, um, I will at like 1 a.m. be wide awake. Why? Why is that the way it is? I don't know. Why do I assume that it's not that way? I also don't know. It's much to think about. And uh, yeah, I'm, this video is getting long, so I'm just gonna end it here. But uh, yeah, let me know about your experiences with these like cycles of cravings and exhaustion and tiredness and wakefulness and and just everything about these cycles right and, and and ebbs and flows and peaks and troughs uh yeah i just feel like there's something here that i didn't understand as a child no one really told me about it and it raises a bunch of questions about what does tiredness really mean what does exhaustion really mean what is possible what is not i don't know let me know tell me right then <laughs>